All right, so these were the original drum brakes that were on the 47 Ford here, and uh, they're in really good shape uh, inside and out, um, but they're kind of a pain in the butt to adjust and to keep adjusted so that they don't lock up or that you don't, you know, lose brakes of some kind. Or once Plus, the they, were, they were blown out too. The yeah. cylinders were blown out. Wheel cylinders are blown out, and wheel cylinders are about $75 a piece for the front of this thing, um, which is crazy. But, so instead of doing all that, I bought a kit from Speedway to convert over to disc brakes. And uh, it's, a, it's a fairly complete kit. Uh, it had GM style calipers, um, new rotors, and th these are available with, I think, four on, or five on four and a half, five on four and three quarter, five on five and a half. I went with the five, and five on five and a half, which is the original um, 40s Ford bolt pattern, only because that was the rims that I already had. Uh, I probably would have gone down to the, because the, I think the Chevy and the Ford standard bolt patterns are only about $300 for the kit. This one was like $480 because of these oddball rotors. So there's a little bit more work. You got to add an adapter in here uh, to get the wheel bearings to work out right with this particular rotor. But all in all, the kit's pretty easy. Uh, we had to look up a few things. There were a few weird uh, idiosyncrasies like swapping out the race here for the front bearing and, and just uh, grinding out a little bit of the bolt holes to get the new bolts to fit through. Uh, I had to trim up this bracket a little bit, but got all this side on the passenger side done. Everything works really nice. And we'll take you to the other side and kind of show you all the stuff that we had to do. That's pretty straightforward. So. All right. So in this particular kit, this race that comes in it that uses a standard, I think GM style bearing, uh, the race needs to be different for this particular application on the 47. So I've got to knock this race out and we've got another race to put in. So all we're going to do is flip it over and you can take a long punch and a hammer and you can just get on the edge of that. We're just going to tap it all the way around and make sure you get good and set on it. And it takes a little while, but go slow. You could also use a a press if you had the right size uh, tool to do it. Just yeah, this is uh, not very apparent in the instructions. It took us a little bit of figuring out that this was messing us up. Yeah, the uh, the other bearing. This is this brace is oversized, so the other bearing, the bearing will go in there, but it won't tighten up. You'll always have slop. It sure does say it in the instructions. You re read them very carefully, but... Well, you mean by that, it says it in giant, bold-printed, yes, underlined but letters. But could, you have to read. But you also had to figure out what they were talking, which part you're talking about. It was actually bold-faced, underlined, and capitalized. Fortunately, one of us does read the instructions. I'll let y'all guess which one that is. Here's a hint, it wasn't me. Yeah. Now we're moving. Okay, now we've gotten it all the way down so that it's touching the wood. I'm gonna bring it up in my lap. And there, you go. and there we go. And it is out. And uh, there's a tool that we've made for <laughs> doing a couple of these procedures, which is this uh, chunk of water pipe. Actually, let me find a tape measure because this works perfect. So this pipe, if you're gonna do this particular thing, you need to go to Home Depot or your local Lowe's or whatever and get a one and three quarter uh, OD piece of water pipe. And I think this is schedule 40, it's, I don't know, eighth inch wall, but it fits perfectly into this race with a couple of pieces of tape on it. I cut it off and squared it up, trued it up, hand filed out the seam in here because you're gonna need this to set your bearing adapter for the rear onto the spindle as well. But this is absolutely, I mean, you couldn't machine a part that, that fits this particular application better than this one and three quarter inch piece of water pipe, um, which is absolutely crazy. 
And then uh, save this little guy here because this bearing race will probably make a good little dimple die for me at some point. And uh, where's the new race? The new race. It's in the pile of parts on that side. Yeah, it's over here. It's probably the race. <laughs> I'm not really caring about it. Nope, that's not. It's that. Oh, what do we got here? Could be, I don't know. I'm gonna find out. Oh no, this no. is the, no, this is the adapter for the front here. You, you need this too. That's, no, the, that's the adapter here. We'll show you this. This slides onto the spindle over there. Victory. My big, big boy hammer. Shout out to Derek. This is the full size Tanya Hardy. Well, he always shakes his head because I'm totally jealous of Derek. A little bit of a man crush on him. A little bit. Just a little bit. Ugh, a little bro crush. If indeed he was your bro. If he was my bro, yeah. Gonna carefully. Yeah, it's a pain that he likes to misorient it really quickly. Now there you go. Now don't go smacking the hell out of this thing. Once you've got it, just got a little tension on it. Set your pipe down on top, and I'm gonna use my little hammer here. Precision instrument. that time. Just go slow. This takes a minute. It's very long to press. Hmm? Uh, oh, you do have a press. I do have a press. But it's not here. So, use what we got. And this is a precision tool. <laughs> Craig's a precision tool. Indeed. And you've given up on precision. It would actually be nice if the one that came pre-installed would actually was the one that you could use. That would be nice. Because this is a pain. I'm willing to bet the thousand dollar kit probably <laughs> comes with the proper stuff installed. You kind of wonder if they got a cheap deal on these regular ones and <laughs> they're like, oh, and here's another one. Put, put that in for you. Yeah. Put that in for yourself. Enjoy. This is definitely some exciting YouTube viewing. Yeah, this particular part of it will likely just be sped up. The nice part is, again, like I showed you earlier, this piece actually fits inside that race, which means that once you get it down to it, it lines up great. Yeah, it's done, I think, isn't it? It looks bottomed out. And I'd show you, but you really wouldn't be able to see, but it is sitting on the bottom of the race there. So we're fully seated. So that part's done. Yay. So now we're going to use the second part uh, 
the use of this tool, which is to put the adapter on the other spindle. So we'll bring you back there. We're gonna do it right now. All right, I'm gonna run down a quick list of all the things we're about to do that are gonna be boring to film, um, but are kind of necessary. So this is your rear bearing adapter, and this was gonna slide on here, and you can see that doesn't go on. Now instructions say you can heat this for 20 minutes at 400 or 450 degrees or something, which will heat it up enough to slide on. You can use a press to put it on, or you can use the uh, same tool, that piece of pipe that I, like I said, I took the center weld seam and just ground it down or filed it out. And now this fits really well in there, but I need to put a piece of tape around the outside of that, keep it from marring, and then that will fit in there. This will slide over and that'll drive it right on. Put a little tape over that just to protect the face so I'm not marring any of my bearing surfaces. Um, so that's the first part. The second thing that we're gonna have to do is on these brackets. I'm gonna check this one real quick. See what happens here is this faces back and this sits over the top of that right here. This may work or you may have to grind, on the other side, I had to grind this out a little bit. This side might actually work um, without that. So we're gonna leave that and figure that out in a second. But again, you might have to trim a little bit of meat out of this here. I just had to kind of knock a little corner in and round it off a little bit. Wasn't that big of a deal. The other thing I had to do is the bolts. One of those, yeah. So these bolts that come with the kit have a shoulder and on the other side, yeah, you can see they're just a couple of foul snug here to hold that bracket on. So all we're gonna do is take half inch drill bit, those are half inch bolts, and we're just going to take any old burrs that may have cropped up through the years. Oh, that was a little easier. And then see, if these fit through there and they do now so I think that's just it's little burrs that have cropped up through the years or you know little dents and dings and stuff on these holes so these fit good now and the square flat should sit right on the old race I think I need just a little bit more nope there we go all right so those are the main things that you have to do. Um, let's go ahead and put this race on. Um, actually, I need, can you give me the blue tape off the, I forgot to put it on here. It's on the white countertop. So again, all I did was just put a little blue tape over the edge, curl it around just to protect this portion of the race. And just to protect the actual race surface just gonna wrap a piece of blue tape around it, plus it gives it a fairly nice tight fit inside of the pipe. Again, I'm telling you, this pipe, it's perfect. Like, it fits all of these parts exactly like you want them to, as if you've machined a tool to do this very job, which I found to be rather incredible, so. Yeah, nice friction fit. It's nice and even. You just slide it on there now like that. And you get to smack it. There you go. Race adapter installed. You see the tape really does a good job of protecting anything from getting marred. Use a little parts cleaner, clean it right off. So these brackets go on with this large uh, pincer, C-shape, whatever you want to call it, 
pointed back along with the uh, bottom of the spindles control arm there. Uh, three bolts and three, I'm going to call them five eight spacers, something like that, whatever that is, five eight three quarter spacer. These bolts go through, line up your flat edge of the bolt with this radius and it may take a little bit of tapping. Luckily on this side, I got a way I didn't need any additional clearance, although it is fairly tight right here and right here. Um, it did go on where the other one would not. So just rough differences in castings. So this one we're gonna go ahead and bolt on, torque it down. It says somewhere between like 32 and 58 <laughs> foot pounds. So we just did like 48 somewhere in the middle, 48, 50 foot pounds is what it said. Check your instructions on your kit, maybe different depending on your year, model, whatever. But anyways, pretty straightforward on that. All right, next step, we've got the bracket on. Uh, all that stuff's bolted on the race uh, adapter for the rear bearing is in so now all we have to do is drop the rear bearing in get yourself good and covered in grease here so that sits down there tippy tappy to set it Put a little grease in there Pack a little bit of grease behind the seal. We're wheel bearings to never really have too much grease. in there get a good liberal application of just all this number sides up on this rear seal as you would assume the cup goes towards the bearing, that way it holds the grease in for you. Ooh, too much, too much. I say you can't do too much. You can wear it. That would be too much, so just a little bit of grease in there. It sets down, and you use a uh, high dollar tool and set it with a block of wood. Luckily these are a loose enough fit. They're not like a Ford timing no, cover. Not. They are not. Steel, front seal. Um, that take quite a bit of effort and force. These go in pretty easily and that's pretty well set. So now we can put this spindle uh, or this uh, hub onto the spindle set our front bearings and get all that stuff put in. It's over there. All right, let me stop the video. All right, so rear seal, rear bearing in. All we do now is spill tools everywhere. Slide this on. You'll feel the seal slide over the adapter in the back. Front wheel bearing, obviously. Back your wheel bearings full of grease, all of that. So we've swapped this race out now. So this should slide on. And go in really nice like that. Then your washer and the large castle nut. Snug it down. This is exactly crescent wrench size. Uh, <laughs> don't know what size it is. We're going to want to snug it up. Feel bearings are still good. That allows you to make sure you've got everything seated like you want. So still moves. And we're going to back it off about a quarter of a turn. 
and line up our cotter pin. Feels a little snug still. One more tooth here. Let's give her a shake. That's too loose. A little bit of tension and then your cotter pin goes through just like any other wearing you'll ever do That should still leave plenty of room for the cap to go on. Keeps that from spinning, coming loose. So now we can pack the front caps, tap those on, and uh, get to putting the caliper on. All right, fill your dust cap with grease to make sure your bearings stay good and lubricated along with your spindle. Kind of tap these to get them started. Always a pain. Always. Hallelujah. All right. A few dents, no worse for the wear. Okay, next up is the caliper. So this is your outside caliper here. This sets into these two notches. I'll take this, so it pins out. So this kit, another weird odd thing about this kit. This kit comes with a different set of uh, bolts here. Instead of using these standard GM two-part, the shim, they look like this. So instead of having this shim piece that goes through, it has this entire piece, but they are identical in size and shape. We had not really figured out why they give you this, because the thread pattern's the same, the diameter's the same, the, the pin and the shaft's the same. Uh, Craig's working theory, gold means grade eight. So we're upgrading from Chinesium to grade eight Chinesium. So one time there may have been a lawsuit. So that, that may be one lawsuit along the way, maybe, don't know. Um, but that's our working theory <laughs> at the moment. But they gave us pretty gold ones, so we're gonna use the pretty gold ones instead of using the stainless ones. So anyways, this goes on the outside. You can see this little ledge on either side of the caliper here. Brake pad sits on there. This one gets the spring clip. The spring clip goes uh, on the top side here, and then this hooks over the bottom. I need a pair of pliers. Let's do that. be able to do it at all on your level of dexterity. I think you're still reeling from the dust cap. Yeah, maybe. So and that just locks in there and that's what keeps it set. So uh, your bleeder valve always goes up regardless of where you're at in the process. And then no shims or inserts required for these, like in a normal GM, as you can see, this actually sits in that and becomes that 
space or, or bushy. You just go through, screw in, and the pins line up and seal to the right there. It uses a standard GM style hex head. These snug the two gadugas roughly. Roughly. And two. Go. Perfect. It's calibrated. 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 So the next thing we do is put in the banjo bolt up top. It's come with a plug in it. Make sure you get rid of that. There are a lot of extra washers in this kit. We haven't yes. figured out. There's like lots and lots of copper washers. So uh, if you're good on those, save those for the next 42 times that you change the brake line out. So one on top of the banjo. Uh, these go down, you can see there's a shoulder. You can see down here where this piece sticks down and then it's trimmed out on top. The piece that sticks down fits into and onto the caliper. So that fits on top and goes like that. So you see the part that sticks down sets into the space in the caliper. Okay, and I'm aiming these. These are at full extension. I'm aiming at full extension for uh, where I'm going to be sitting in my brake connector there. So I don't want this to pinch and bind. I don't want it to do anything weird. So right about there. Copper on here, see if I can tear that up. So one Uga. Sure. Okay. Do you want to make it more crushed? It's hard to make it less crushed. Yes. All right, and um, so these have the typical uh, replacement clips that you can put in here that bind these on. Um, these will not line up comfortably or easy, easily with all of the original parts. 
and since we don't feel like necessarily having to replace all of these brake lines just yet we're going to cheat take this clip off run it up through here use this as the spacer inside that hole and then just have because these are plenty long because that's all i need to go and you can see i have plenty of loop here and i'm at full extension now so i have plenty of line to get to where i need to bolt on here but we're going to do that by running it up through here without this clip and then we'll we'll do some finagling to get that to match up later proper use of zip ties so we'll take this clip off your mileage may vary on this you may want to you know do this properly we think we would since it took us nine hours to take out the old bracket and put the new bracket in based upon the lack of ability to get on the act back in the open. custom right there that gives us plenty of movement plenty of protection there with that uh, doubled up so we're good to go there and there you go your hubs are now install plug it into your brake lines and go we're going to check all the brake lines on this i've got a uh, uh, master cylinder coming in with a booster on it probably going to be some fabrication involved in making that fit and work the pedal shape and assembly is a little bit different it's one for a 32 ford because i couldn't find one with a booster for this which i'm assuming means that it doesn't work which means that i'll have to make it work but anyways there you go disc brake kit installed easy cheesy once you figure out all the not easy cheesy bits. <laughs> okay.